Hi, I want to tell you about the incline plane, how you solve incline plane problems. Um, to do that, let's first review Newton's second law. Um, well, actually, how to solve a Newton's second law problem, just in general. So what do you do um, when you're solving a Newton's second law problem, especially if it's a difficult one? The easier, the very easy ones, you don't need to do this, but for the more difficult ones, what you want to do is you want to choose a system to study. Um, usually it's an object, but sometimes it's several objects together combined. Then you um, draw all the forces that are on the object, only the forces on the object. You don't draw the forces that the that this or that are on your system. Um, you don't draw just all the forces you can find, but just the forces that are on your system. This is called a free body diagram. Number two is you draw a free body diagram. Number three, um, you choose a coordinate system, an XY coordinate system, with one of the axes in the direction of acceleration. So if, if the thing is accelerating, you should make one of the axes in the direction of the acceleration. Then you um, set up a Newton's second law in both directions. And what I mean by that is you, um, you use Newton's second law, which is A of the system in the X direction is equal to the net force in the X direction over the mass. This is the symbol that we use for a summation, um, a sigma, a capital sigma, and that is um, that just means sum up all the forces. That's the net force. Notice that um, this is a, a vector times divided by a scalar. So when you do that, the the A and the F net will always be in the same direction. That is always the case. The A and the net force will always be in the same direction. Um, and so, and you do it in the Y as well. Okay, so let's get started on inclined planes then. With an inclined plane, let's let's first just have a, a situation where you have a frictionless inclined plane. like so. And uh, that's a straight inclined plane, maybe um, inclined at an angle theta. And um, here is your object, some crate or something that's on here. And this is frictionless, so we won't worry about friction just yet. If I draw all the forces on here, um, I'm going to draw um, a force of, there's two forces on this. There's the force of gravity, straight downward, and then there's the normal force, and the normal force is always perpendicular between the two surfaces. So um, normally I would draw a dot here and show the forces coming from that dot. But for inclined planes, this is what you want to do. Put it right on the inclined plane. I'll sh you'll see why in a second. Uh, make the force vector, the, the force of gravity vector, really big so that it actually goes all the way through the inclined plane. You'll see why in a second. And then you're going to take and um, draw in the normal force. See how that's normal to the plane? That's Fn. Okay. Well, um, if... The, if um, there's no other for if there are no other forces on this, then this thing's going to accelerate down the inclined plane. So that's one of the directions I want one of the axes to be. So I'd like it to be. I'm going to call this the x direction, and then the y direction has to be perpendicular to that. So this is the y direction. I'm going to make the um, x direction this way is positive because that's the way it's accelerating. All right. Um, now what I need to do is I need to break all the forces into, into um, X and Y directions. So the normal force is all in the Y direction, but the gravitational force um, is both in the X and the Y. So I'm going to break it into an X and a Y. See how that's in the X? That's in the x direction. See the x direction? And this is in the y direction. Okay, so um, if that's theta, then and that's a right angle, then this is 90 minus theta. And then this is a right angle. So this is back to theta. See how I leapfrog there? 
That's so much easier because I put the dot right there and not up a little higher. And also because I, I drew this arrow all the way through, you, I, could make the, I could make the argument that that's 90 degrees, so that's 90 minus theta, so that's theta. Okay, since this is theta and, and the hypotenuse, these are right angles, this is the hypotenuse, is force of gravity, then um, this, let's call this box M, so the force of gravity is mg. And this being the opposite side, that's going to be mg sine of theta. And this being the adjacent side, that's going to be mg cosine of theta. Okay, well, um, in, the, in the y direction, it's not accelerating. It's, it's not, it's always... Um, uh, it's just staying on the plane the whole time. So I know that this force has to equal that force. So I know Fn has to equal um, mg cosine of theta. That's in the y direction. But in the x direction, there's nothing balancing out this force. And so I'm going to say A in the x direction is equal to the net force in the x direction divided by the mass. And as you see, the mass cancels. So A in the x direction is G times the sine of theta. Now that kind of makes sense because um, if we look, the sine of zero degrees That's, I want that to be a zero. The sine of zero degrees is equal to zero. And the sine of 90 degrees is equal to one. So look at the two extreme cases for this, for this equation. When um, the incline has no inclination, it's just at, on a horizontal, then um, the acceleration down the inclined plane or on the, on the board at that point, if this is theta, is zero, then the acceleration is going to be um, zero. So when theta is zero, we get an acceleration of zero. But when theta is 90 degrees, then that would be like just picking that board all the way up to the top. And that block is basically going to be in free fall because it's just going to fall straight down. There's going to be nothing pressing it against the board. So when theta, equal, when theta equals 90 degrees, then the acceleration, if we put in 90 degrees for that, is just G. So it works in the extreme cases, and it works in all the other cases as well. That's the physics of a very basic inclined plane problem. A um, couple things just to note, because I, I see I have at least one more minute left. If this thing were heading up the inclined plane... Let's say this thing were on its way up the inclined plane and there was friction. Which way would you think the frictional force would be? If this, were, if this thing were flying up the inclined plane and there was friction, friction would be this way. If this thing were sliding down the inclined plane and there was friction, if it's sliding down, then the force of friction is slowing it up. And so it, it would be the other way. So you have to be careful with friction on inclined planes. You have to decide which way it's going. It's not always down or up the inclined plane. All right, good luck.